In my hand, I have the DJI Mavic Air 2. And what I wanted to do in this video was go through who I think this drone is for, what's good about this drone, what's not so good about this drone, and just where this fits in the whole drone lineup, whether you're a professional or a beginner, is this the drone that you should get? All right guys, let's get into it. So I'm out in Yucca Valley right now. This is kind of near Joshua Tree. That's why you see all the crazy trees around. But my family has property out here, so it's the perfect place to come and fly drones. I'm working on a huge comparison video between all of DJI's products. But I wanted to do a video specifically on the DJI Mavic Air 2 because I think this upgrade from the original Air is huge, and there's a lot of things that you're gonna really like about the Air 2. One of the biggest upgrades from the original Mavic Air is the incorporation of OcuSync 2.0. So originally when you flew the Mavic Air, the Wi-Fi transmission just wasn't that good and the image would break up all the time. But now with the OcuSync, you have clean transmission and I've been flying all over this valley and I've had no dropouts whatsoever. So let's talk about price because that's a huge factor when determining if you're gonna buy a drone or not. So this one's priced at $800, which is right between the Mavic Mini and the Mavic 2 Pro and Zoom line. I definitely think it's a good price because this drone is going to appeal to both beginners and professionals. It definitely sits right in the middle. If you have zero flying experience whatsoever, you're gonna be able to pick up this drone and start flying. Whereas if you're a professional and you want something that's just easy and it's with you all the time, like in your backpack, then this would also be a good option for you. I think this is the drone that bridges that gap. So when folded out, it definitely looks much bigger than the original Mavic Air, and it is thicker. However, when you fold it down to pack away, it's really not that much bigger, and it's really not that much heavier. It does have a little bit of a size increase, but I don't think that's that big of a deal. If you liked the size of the original Mavic Air, you'll be fine with the size of this one. One thing to note though when it comes to the controller is that there is definitely a size increase from the Mavic Air controller. So the Mavic Air 2 has more functionality on its controller and the phone now sits on top versus underneath, which I think is a huge design improvement. Now, in terms of size, I did like the original size of the Mavic Air controller, but with this one, you don't have any antennas on the top and you also have a button dead center of the controller, which allows you to flip from sport to normal to tripod mode, which for me is something that I've been using a lot. So I'll use the sport mode, I'll fly to where I wanna get to, and then flip it into the tripod mode so that I can get smoother shots. And having all of this integrated right there on the drone makes it very easy to fly. Now, personally, I don't mind the size of it. It is gonna be a little bit bigger packing into my backpack, but the bigger grips on the side does make it easier to use. So we have to talk about the camera on this drone because the camera is very impressive. It actually is better than a lot of the other drones on their lineup. And even with the Mavic 2 Pro, you don't get 4K 60, and that's a huge upgrade. I mean, having 4K 60 is a very powerful tool, and then with that, you also get 120 and 240 slow-mo. So you get some really cool options to be able to do slow motion with this camera. Now, it packs a 48 megapixel camera, which allows you to do 8K photos. Also means it allows you to do 8K hyperlapses. So there's a ton of flexibility with this camera, whether you're a video creator or a photographer. Couple things to note though when it comes to this camera, you're not gonna get all of the professional controls that you might expect out of one of the higher end Mavic series or the Phantom series. So you don't really have control of your contrast, saturation, your sharpness. You basically have two profiles that you can shoot in. You have normal and you have Cine Like D. Cine Like D makes it a little bit flatter and it gives you a little bit more room so that you can color grade. Now for me, that's enough. I've worked with the Cine Like D and with the camera, you have 120 megabytes at 4K 60. So it's enough to be able to do a good looking color grade on this footage. You don't need the log. However, I know there's some of you out there that really do like having the log. And if that's you, then you're probably gonna be more interested in the Mavic 2 Pro. And one other thing about it, because you can't dial back the sharpness at all, you basically get the sharpness that comes out of camera. And I know some of you are gonna think that it's a little too over sharpened. And I don't mind the look of the footage, it actually looks really good when played back on a computer, but it is just something to keep in mind. You don't really have a whole lot of control 
beyond just switching between normal and cine like D. So one of the most powerful features that I've noticed with this camera is the integration of ActiveTrack 2.0. So this ActiveTrack works super well. Whether you're going uphill, downhill, anywhere, the camera will track you and follow you. And I really was trying to push this camera and see if it could follow me. I jumped on my one wheel and was going back and forth and going in circles and going up and down hills. And the camera stayed with me the entire time and it even avoided all the Joshua trees as it was flying through them. One thing to note about the active track is that when you put it into active track mode, you're not gonna be able to use 4K 60. You're gonna have to bump it down to 4K 30 or 24 or 25 frames per second. Now also with automation, you have all those modes that make it super easy to get shots like the Helix, the Droney, the Rocket. Now these are great, however, on this drone, they're really catered more towards beginners or people who just want to get quick shots. So when you put it into one of these modes, it automatically bumps the camera down to 1080p and it puts it into the normal color profile. So if you want to fly 4K 60 and using Cine like D, then you're not going to be able to use any of the automation modes in this drone. So I did a low light test last night because I wanted to see how this drone compares to say the Mavic 2 Pro. And you definitely notice a lot more noise in the Mavic 2 Air, but it does get a decent image at night. It's not gonna be a full on night flying drone. I would highly suggest looking at the Mavic 2 Pro or the Phantom if you are looking to shoot in low light, but the Air 2 will do great at sunset, sunrise. You'll still be able to get pretty good looking image, especially because it has a half inch sensor versus the smaller sensor. So battery life is super important for your drone because you don't wanna get in a situation where you're flying really far away and then the battery dies. So the Mavic Air 2 has a 34 minute flight time, which has been a huge bonus for me because it allows me to like fly out, plan my shot, kind of check things out, get the shot and not have to rush back. And when you have a drone that has less flight time, you really need to plan things before you take it up in the air. And you also need to swap out batteries consistently. I've been able to use the Mavic Air 2 and do multiple flights on one battery just because that 34 minute flight time allows me to do a lot more. So I definitely like the fact that it has a longer flight time than some of the other drones out there. So with the active track, I was talking about how it tracks you up and down and it can kind of trace the surface. This drone has surface recognition. So when you use point of interest, it's not only gonna fly dynamically around you and avoid objects using the sensors, but it can also sense the surface. And another really cool feature that they've added is the light underneath the drones. So when you're flying like closer to sunset or sunrise and you need to land your drone, it has a light underneath it so you can see where the drone is landing. It's super helpful. So who is this drone for? I definitely think this is like the perfect drone for creators because it's sitting at a price point. It's not too expensive. It's a drone that's small enough that you can have with you anywhere you go, just throw it in your backpack. And it just gives you a lot of flexibility with having these different video features. Now, if you're a pro and you need more control over your camera, then you're gonna need to go up to like the Mavic 2 Pro. And if you're just like a beginner and you're just kind of like flying around and you don't really need all of the features that this one comes with, then the Mavic Mini might be a good option for you. For me, this drone's gonna be in my backpack everywhere I go. So I highly suggest you check out this video next. It's all about the biggest mistakes that drone pilots make when flying.